Hey friends, my name is Osama. I have a background in nuclear engineering and one of my favorite nuclear reactor types is called the Kandu reactor. And I might be a bit biased because I am Canadian. However, the Kandu reactor not only op operates in Canada, but also operates in many other nations across the world, such as Argentina, Romania, South Korea, and many other nations. So how many Kandu reactors have been built in the past and how many are operating to this day? Fun fact, in the year 1987, the Kandu reactor was listed as Canada's top 10 engineering achievements in the past 100 years. And amongst this list is actually the CN Tower as well. The CN Tower is 30 kilometers away from a major nuclear generating station, an eight unit Kandu reactor station called the Pickering Nuclear Generating Station. All right, so let's start with the great, great grandfather of the Kandu reactor, which is the NPD, the Nuclear Power Demonstration Reactor. This single unit started servicing around 1962 and was Canada's first nuclear power reactor and prototype of the Kandu reactor design. This reactor was located in a location called Rolfton in the province of Ontario. So this is close to the west bank of the Ottawa River and 230 kilometers upstream from the city of Ottawa. So Ottawa is Canada's capital city. It was also situated close to the AECL, Atomic Energy Corporation Limited, Chalk River Laboratories. So Chalk River Laboratories is Canada's research laboratory where a lot of these designs uh, for reactors were developed. Uh, this prototype helped develop the foundations for research and development, which later led to the commercial applications of Kandu reactor systems. So it played a really important part. So next is Douglas Point. In the year 1968, shortly after the NPD was developed, Douglas Point, which is the second Kandu reactor, was built and started operating. This was officially Canada's first full-scale nuclear power plant. And the location is located on the shore of Lake Huron, uh, around 190 kilometers from downtown Core Toronto. It marked as a major success for Canada because it was Canada's entry into the global nuclear power. And what's interesting is that this site also houses the Bruce Nuclear Generating Station, which is located south of Douglas Point. Also, what I find super interesting about this reactor is that it had an oil-filled window, which allowed direct observation of the reactor phase, even while the reactor was in full power. I really wish I had the chance to see that for myself when this reactor was operating. The next station I'll be covering is the Pickering Nuclear Generating Station, which is eight unit, and it consists of two different plants, so Pickering A and Pickering B, which are four units each. each unit is around 500 megawatts. What's interesting is that this is one of Canada's oldest operating stations. Pickering is interesting because it's located 30 kilometers away from core downtown Toronto. So it's in the vicinity of a major uh, city. As of filming this video, six out of eight units at the station are operating and providing around 14% of Ontario's electricity needs. So let's jump into the Bruce Nuclear Generating Station which is next on our list and a total of eight units similar to that of Pickering. There's two stations, Bruce A and Bruce B, okay? And what's interesting is that Bruce Power is the largest operating nuclear facility in North America. It's also the second largest nuclear power plant in the world. Uh, it's located on the shore of Lake Huron, around 190 kilometers from downtown Toronto. Uh, the waters of Lake Huron, for those that don't know, are very blue, green, and very vibrant. It's actually the closest you can get to the Bahamas in Canada. <laughs> uh, here's an epic video shot of um, that I took when I got the chance to do an internship at that site. Uh, it generates enough electricity to power 5 million Ontario homes. It also provides around 30% of Ontario's electricity. So next we'll jump into Darlington, which is a total of four Kandu units. What's interesting about Darlington is that it's one of the newest Kandu fleets in that of Canada. Darlington is located around 70 kilometers east of Toronto in, in a similar vicinity to that of Pickering. This facility generates enough electricity to power around 2 million homes in Ontario which is around 20% of Ontario's electricity needs. Currently, a 10 year long refurbishment project is going on to extend the life of Darlington. What's interesting about Kandu reactors is that after 30 years of operation, they have the option of extending their life. So that means replacing parts of the Kandu reactor core, which is the calandria tubes, uh, steam generators, instrumentation and control devices. And what this does, is it extends the life of the reactors by 30 years. So in 2021, fun fact, Darlington actually set a world record for continuous operation of a nuclear power reactor for 1,106 days 
and counting. All right, so next on our list is Point the Pro. Point the Pro is super special because it's a single unit station and the only one of its kind that's operating in Atlantic Canada. Also, uh, what's interesting about this reactor is that it's the first CANDU 6 reactor design of its kind to generate com electricity commercially. So CANDU 6, so CANDU 6 meaning 600 megawatts is operating in many other countries across the world, which I'll go through in a little bit. It also went through a refurbishment project or life extension and was returned to service in, in the year 2012 uh, of November. It provides New Brunswick, which is, which is its province, around 30% of its electricity. So this single unit station provides 30% of an entire province's electricity, which is quite remarkable. All right, so next on our list is Jean Tilly 2, which is a single unit can do six reactor. It's located on the south shore of the St. Lawrence River in the province of Quebec. It's also situated around 100 kilometers uh, northeast of the city of Montreal. Yes, there used to be a operating reactor around 100 kilometers east of Montreal. For those that don't know, the province of Quebec is located right next to the province of Ontario, which is the main nuclear hub for Canada's nuclear industry at the moment. Uh, Jean Tilly 2, like I said, is the is a CANDU 6 design, similar to that of Point Le Pro, and it operated between 1983 to that of 2012, so it's no longer operating. A Jean Tilly 1, however, is strictly not necessarily a CANDU reactor, rather it was a CANDU BWR, more of a prototype reactor, so I haven't included it in this list. All right, so let's jump into international CANDUs. I, maybe I should have put international CANDUs up front, and the first on our list is Chernovoda, which is two unit station. All right, so this station is a two unit can do six design and su supplies around 18% of Romania's electricity. This is operated by a state owned corporation in Romania called Societia Nationala Nuclear Electrica or short for SNN. Alongside producing electricity, what's interesting about the station is that Chernovoda provides district heating for the township of Chernovoda. Okay, so this is an interesting feature in nuclear power reactors is that they have the ability of also providing process heat or district heating for different areas. Originally, the site was planned for five CANDU six stations. Uh, only two of them were successfully built. Uh, this is due to lack of financial resources and also a drop in power demand in the early 1990s. Okay, so it left the construction of the three other units on hold. So two of those units at around are around 15% completion and one is around, at around 3% completion as of today. While these units were being built, the remaining efforts were put on the two units at Chernovoda to, to finish completion. What's great is in October of 2021, just recently, the Romanian government announced its plans to add an additional two CANDU 6 units to the site. Also refurbishment of unit one is going to be taking place in the year 2027 and also units 2 refurbishment are also going to be taking place in the year 2037. All right so next is Embalse. Okay Embalse is a single unit station located in Argentina. Uh, yes Argentina uh, Embalse power plant is Argentina's second nuclear power plant and this single unit is located in the south coast of Rio Terciro Reservoir in the province of Cordoba. What's interesting is this reactor has had a life extension, which took place January of 2019 and was restarted. Argentina's CANDU-6 unit also produces Cobalt-60, a radiomedical isotope, which is produced in a lot of the CANDU reactors in Canada. So that is also super interesting. All right, so let's jump from South America to that of Asia. And specifically in Asia, China. China has two Kandu reactors in its station called Quinshan. And what's interesting about these Kandu reactor units is that they are some of the most advanced Kandu reactor designs in the world. Um, Quinshan is a nuclear power plant which is located in the Haiyan country in Zhejiang, Zhejiang province, approximately 126 kilometers southwest of Shanghai. Now these reactors uniquely have other pressurized water reactors or PWRs located in their vicinity. So what's interesting about the CANDU uh, reactor is that it has fuel flexibility to, to actually use spent fuel that's processed and you could throw that into the CANDU units 
So what you're using is you're using nuclear waste from light water reactors within the Kandu reactor. So it, it can use that as fuel. So this capability is, is not as popularly used across the world because the country would need to have both a light water reactor and also a Kandu reactor. So there's two countries with that capability, which is both China and Korea. So overall, these, these units are some of the newest Kandu units out there. They were, they were start servicing in the year, in the early 2000s. And uh, next we'll jump into Walsong, which is also located in Asia, in South Korea. Uh, Walsong is a four unit Kandu station uh, and it's owned and operated by Co Korea Hydro and nuclear power company. So these Kandu reactors have been refurbished in the past as well. All right, so let's take a tour of Kandu reactors located in South Asia. And we'll start off with the country called Pakistan. Now, Pakistan has a single unit Kandu reactor station, which is called Kanap or Karachi. Uh, the single unit Kandu is located in the Sindh province, around 30 kilometers from the city of Karachi, which is on the Arabian Sea. This area is called Paradise Point. Uh, Karachi 1 is the world's oldest Kandu reactor, okay, which uses a 137 megawatt Kandu design. So it's basically an operated version of the NPD or the nuclear power demonstration reactor. So this is owned and operated by the Pakistani Atomic Energy Commission. Uh, it was recently shut down in the year July of 2021, and it is marked as one of the world's oldest operating reactors. Now, the, this plant uh, is being extended, however, at the moment, not with Kandu technology, but with the new Chinese technology called Hualong-1 or HPR-1000 reactors. All right, so next we'll talk about a Kandu reactor located in India, which is similarly a 100 megawatt design. Uh, this was India's first nuclear reactor, which was uh, based off the Douglas Point design. Um, it was built in Rawatabad and in the state of Rajasthan. Uh, subsequently, India has several other Kandu derived reactors um, that were built throughout the years. Okay, there, so uh, that's something that uh, we can maybe discuss in another video. Well, there you have it. That is a list of all Kandu reactors which have operated and are currently operating throughout the world. I went through reactors uh, internationally, located in Europe, South America, South Asia, and also Asia. And lastly, last but not least, Canada. Uh, so hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you get a chance to like, subscribe, and comment in the, in the comments below. And till then, uh, take care.